This is me, I'm Dead Viking, and this uh, is Mythic Battles. Mythic Battles is a awesome uh, miniatures battles game that has several different modes in which you can play. Um, there are skirmishes, there are campaigns, there are you know team battles, three versus one, all these different options you can have when you play the game um, that all come with this amazing, uh, like amazing looking miniatures for, to begin with, but um, but very very immersive style, uh, wonderful theme, and also like. Uh, very quick to teach, but uh, remarkably deep um, uh, mechanic set uh, that makes for a very, very fun experience when you sit down and play it at the table. So uh, let me show you how the game is played and also take some time to show you some awesome miniatures that you're going to see uh, once this game gets published. And then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts of uh, Mythic Battles. All right, cool. All right, so this is Mythic Battles, and before I kind of dive in and show you how the game is played, just a couple quick things. Uh, this is a prototype that I was sent, whereas the miniatures are really nice, <laughs> and I will show you those in just a little bit. Let me show you how the game is played, and then I'll give you a close-up on some of the minis. Uh, this game board, obviously, is like kind of a poster. You can see I got a little crease there. Um, you know, I, I didn't get like all of the tokens that necessarily I need uh, to play the game. I just got basically the bare bones so I could actually have uh, skirmish battles, which I've gone ahead and set up here. I don't have, um, like, you're supposed to have blocks that show that, like, certain spots are, are impassable, you know, and can block ranged, like those things. Um, the map itself uh, doesn't have, like, the center of the, the uh, of each uh, square or, or, like, because these aren't squares. I mean, these are, um, like... Different in some in some cases it can be kind of tough uh, to see the lines you know because like this rock is a space but then like that's a space and like this is a space kind of thing so um, in some cases it's kind of tough to tell you know where those lines are and which is a space and which isn't uh, but so but in the in the game once it's published they will have a a very specific uh, denotation of like the center of that particular spot will also have a number, and the number itself will tell you how many units you can have in those particular locations. So, uh, you know, so like here you can actually see in like the setup board that I got, it's like you can see like here's this spot here, and you can see that's like technically the center, and there's like a six there, and so you can have six units in that particular spot. So, you know, there's that. So I don't have that per se, like it, which you can see in front of you. Um, these the, these dials that are used to, uh, you know, track your 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 units on either side are not going to be dials in the game. They're going to be flat boards. You can go ahead and check that out. Functionally, uh, they're the same. Uh, I think they went with the flat boards basically because then they can have the powers and abilities all in the front, uh, whereas like these are kind of small and I have the powers and abilities on the back of these. But they still work perfectly fine. So, I mean, there's going to be differences between what you see in front of you and what the game is actually going to look like, but as I said now several times, functionally, uh, this game works exactly the same. And <laughs> the most important thing, uh, the miniatures uh, look awesome, and I'm going to show you those here in just a little bit. So uh, the game is, this is the skir skirmish game, so I, I, I didn't play like the campaign mode or anything like that, uh, so I can't really speak to that, but um, they will, it will use the same uh, rules and the same mechanisms to play that portion. So uh, the way the game works is that each person will have either a pre-made team or they will draft a team. Uh, these are the two pre-made teams. Um, this is the, the like Battle of Athena uh, versus Ares. And and they're, they're having a skirmish, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to reclaim either four of these Omphalus gems, which are these little green gems that you see in these locations, or they're trying to kill the other god. And whoever, whatever team manages to do that uh, will win the game. The, these Omphalus gems are these divine gems that you know, allow you to regain some of your uh, lost godhood, your lost divinity. And then you get one of these Omphalus cards that unlocks more abilities for your god when you do have your god absorb those gems. And I'll talk about the absorbing the gems here in just a little bit. So... Uh, one of the big things with this game is that uh, it's an activation game. 
uh, meaning that like you don't just get to move whoever you want on your turn. The activation of the units on your side will be determined by the cards as you draw from your activation deck, which is this. Now the activation deck is comprised of all the different units that you have in your side, on your like on, on your team, and then they each have a certain number of activation cards. So you can see, like, and this is denoted here on this part. So here's Odysseus. Um, you know, it's I, well, I'm not going to show you the minis yet. I want to show them to you. I'll show them to you in just a little bit. But so like this says that there are three activation cards here, and this means that he has three Art of War cards. Art of War cards are these cards that allow you to activate um, certain powers and also do other certain things depending on. Basically, they they um, allow you to uh, you know, if, if you get a bad draw or something with your cards, you can use them to, like, search for a certain card in your deck and, and, and put that in your hand. You know, things like that. They, they technically kind of break the rules, but, you know, since they're part of the rules, it's not really breaking the rules, so to speak. And, you know, while I have one of these out, I just want to show you how this works. Here, let me show you Heracles. So... Heracles, um, you know, you you go to the you start them all off at the top level, and then you have attack, defense, range, and he has zero range. This is his power, and like if he has any dice for his power, so like his power ability has seven dice. Like his attack has eight dice. He has a defense of eight, meaning that you have to roll an eight or better uh, to wound him. He has a movement of one, and he has a health of eight. So you can see as you decrease like his health as he takes wounds. He'll slowly go down, and his abilities will decrease slowly as you go down. And notice how, like, even you get to this point, like, here, hold on, I'll get there. Like, he totally, like, loses his ability to use his power at that point. So it's kind of like it's a, it's a gradual thing. Any special abilities they have over here are listed. Um, Mighty Throw, like, is an ability to, like, knock back people when you're, when you're fighting them to do things. And then you can see that here's his powers. This is an activation power. You can tell because it's got the lightning bolt on it. And here is, this is Herculean Feet, and that little, like, hourglass there means that that's a passive ability. So you can look at the back, and that'll tell you what the powers are. So Herculean Strength, what he, it's kind of neat. What he does is he actually, if he in the spot with like something like one of these ruins or like in a spot with trees uh he actually picks up that tree or that ruins and he can throw it and like affect an entire area and like attack an entire area uh by by basically heaving uh stones and and pillars and what have you at those people it's kind of power and like the herculean feet uh whenever he is attacks whenever he attacks or is attacked uh you may reroll up to three dice from the first die roll so it's like so he's just like you know super powerful and super strong obviously somebody you like having uh, on your team if you will but you know so that's that's how these work you know you, you may have played games with dials before i mean it, it, it they're all based off of the kind of the same premise so uh with each unit that you pick, you take their activation cards and you put them into your deck. You take whatever Art of War cards they get, you put those into your deck, and then you take three Art of War cards that you just have, and then you shuffle up your deck, and then you draw three off the deck, off the top of the deck, and so you're going to start with six activation cards, because you're going to get the three Art of War cards that you set aside, and you're going to get your three that you drew. So, like, I drew a Minotaur, an Ares, and Odysseus. Those are my three. So... Very basically, on your turn, uh, what you're going to do is, um, if you well, you can choose. You're going to draw a card. So draw a card and put it in your hand. So in this case, uh, we got Spartans. So we can have our unit Spartans. And I'll talk about units here in just a little bit because they're kind of have a little special ability here. I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Um, so you draw a card, and if you choose not to activate them, your turn. You, you don't. I, I've never really seen the reason why, unless like you're really licking your wounds or you're biding your time for some reason, you can choose not to activate anybody and you can draw another card off, off the top of the deck uh, and put that in your hand. And I should mention that if you ever do run out of cards, this isn't a game where if you run out of cards in your deck, um, you're dead or anything like that. You just shuffle up your discards and, and, and start over. So uh, that's how that works. But what you're going to do is you're, you normally, unless there's some special power or ability um, that, you're, that you're enacting, you only get to activate one unit on your side. So if you want to do something, like if you said you want to move your Minotaur, and, and movement, you could activate, you, you show the card to show that you're activating that particular uh, uh, creature or a hero or god or whoever, and then you take the action that you want to do with that particular unit, and, and which it, it boils down to you can have, you have two simple actions, or one like complex or special 
action. Uh, so uh, uh, the simple actions are moving, attacking, or claiming an omphalos, which is these little gems that are out there. Um, so moving is pretty simple. You just move. You know, it's like so. If we take a look at my Minotaur buddy here, let me get out his little dial. Uh, we can go ahead and see, you know, what his abilities are. And so he's got a movement of one. Now a complex action or a special action you can take is called run, which means you just add one to your movement so you can get further along. But basically it takes away any other possibilities of doing anything else in your turn. But we can still, if we wanted to do that, we could just go one, two, and we could get our Minotaur out to that spot, and he's on top of where that gem is. And then we, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe next turn he can go ahead and claim that, pick it up, and he can bring it back to Ares so he, Ares can absorb it. And so you can do that. Now you can, like as a simple action, move and then attack. Uh, you know, so if you, like if he had like a ranged attack and somebody was within range of him, he could move and then attack with that. Or if there was a unit uh, next to him, so let's just uh, take one of these units here. Let me just grab, uh, let's let's say, okay, so because like the centaurs, let's, let's just go ahead. Like if the centaurs um, were here, uh, like, he can't attack them because he's not in the same spot as them. The only way that he could attack them is that if they had um, maxed out the maximum number of units for that particular spot. Uh, and in which case, then, you can melee into that location if you so desire. Um, but normally, melee attacks have to, like, you basically all have to be in the same spot uh, to, to succeed at those. So, if, like... We didn't run. Let's you know. Let's just let's for 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 let's just do this. Here we go. So we, let's go ahead and put both the centaurs there for whatever reason they were there, and I can create an attack. So on my turn, I activate my minotaur. He steps into this location, and now it's a simple action. I can choose to attack. So attacking is pretty simple. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the number of dice you get. So like this minotaur has seven dice to attack. Now let's go ahead and find the centaurs so we can see. And I, this is a good example where I can show you. So uh, troops are like the lowest lowest denominator in your part in your group, but. Um, they have the ability, you can actually have the ability to like, uh, to spend Art of War cards to recall them so you can replenish them if you want and, and get them back into the fight. So like normally like these are like your expendable guys, but they're expendable because you can use Art of War cards to get them back. But so here you have, so the centaurs, um, they have three activation cards. These two little pawns mean that there are two figures. You can see I moved those two figures for the centaurs. So there's two figures to note that and then what that means is that basically um, for every point of damage they take, you remove one of the centaurs from, from the group. So um, right now they're at full strength because they have the two possible. So they have a defense of six. So I'm going to roll my, my seven dice. Hopefully I don't bounce everything around here because normally I would use a dice tray for this. But uh, so we're going to go ahead and the, cent the minotaur has seven dice. And we're going to go ahead and check... Um, so I'm going to say actually one other thing that he has, uh, you, you notice that he has the Minotaur has both charge and bloodlust as his special abilities. And this actually is a good moment where I can actually show you. See how our charge has this little denotation there. If I used an Art of War card, I could use that special ability of charge. Basically, charge allows him to like, move, like, charge into an area and attack, uh, and, you know, because of the fact that he's allowed to move, uh, uh, like, moves up to two zones. Um, so it's like, it's one of those things where he can actually move further and actually go through, through an attack. And I should mention one other thing. You do get two simple actions, and attacking and moving are both simple actions, but you can't attack and then move. That's to prevent people from, like, you know, attacking somebody and then scampering away. You can move and then attack, but you can attack and then move. Just keep that in mind. So, um, so basically, what Bloodlust does, and, and since it is a um, like, uh, it's always active. You know, it's the little uh, hourglass there. It is an always active ability. What it does is that when I reroll, if a five is the maximum number that are on these dice, you can notice these are dice that have just basically a sticker over the uh, 
the, the blank spot. So um, if I, if I, for every five I get, I get to re-roll a die. Now, the first thing is first, if I roll any blanks, I have to go ahead and get rid of those blanks immediately. I can't do anything with those. Well, let's just see what I get here. So, and what, what you're looking for, since they have a defense of six, I really, I have to roll fives. Um, but you don't have to roll fives to get fives. Now, you're saying, what does that mean? Let me explain that in just a second here. So we roll these dice, and actually I got lucky and I got a lot of fives, actually. This, this is a crazy good roll. So I got these three five, these four fives, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead. I have to get rid of this one because I rolled a blank. Now, sometimes there's special abilities that use blanks, like um, the mighty throws and stuff like that will allow you to use blanks. But uh, in this case, I don't have any of those abilities, so I'm going to go ahead and roll. Now, the bloodlust says that for every five I get to, I get to re-roll a die. Well, I'm not going to re-roll my fives because those are really good rolls because I get to re-roll those anyway to see if I can get higher than a six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two dice and I'm going to re-roll them and see what I get. And I got another five and I got a blank. These centaurs are toast. There's, there, there's, there's literally no way I'm not destroying these. So uh, what I'm going to do is then I get to re-roll all of these dice. Now, let me just... I, so let me just roll through this and you can see how this works. So I'm going to roll through. I do plenty of enough damage. I have plenty more that are greater than six. I'm going to just totally uh, kill those centaurs. Now, if I hadn't killed those centaurs, now, and the other player had a centaur uh, activation card, let me just find one here. Um, if they if they had that, that centaur activation card and they were still alive, they can play that as a retaliation which basically then says that they get to attack back. That's one of the cool things about this game is that um, if you have a really good strategy to have is that if you have like uh, certain uh, people that can block for certain people or take damage for certain people, or you just have cards in your hand that like allow you to you know, strike back, and, you know, you you have a, that card to do the retaliate. It's one of those, like, strategies that's very, very common and, and, and used, you know, every single time I played this, we always kind of had those cards in our hand. Um, and so it also has adds to a little of a bluffing thing going on. Like, if you move a guy out there, kind of like, oh, why is the, you know, they're moving out there? Like, they're, they're, he's just kind of begging me to attack him. But then you realize, hmm... Maybe that's a trap kind of thing. Like, he's got a card in his hand that's going to hurt me. So, I mean, there, there's stuff like that. But that, I'll talk about more of that, about that in my in my conclusion. But, so, in this situation, they would have had the ability... They could roll and they could retaliate and they could possibly do damage to me. But, now, let's just say, for example, when I rolled all my dice, I rolled, like, uh, three... Let me see. One, two, three... I got five dice. And then I got a couple of blanks. So I didn't get a single five, so I don't have anything that I can re-roll. But here's what you can do. So let's go ahead and we take those two, we remove those anyway. But what you're able to do then is you're able to take those dice. You could go ahead and you could take and get rid of one of your die and raise this up to five. Like so. Just because you get rid of a die, you get to raise one by one pip. And you could then, by the same uh, excuse, or the same, same rule, remove these two dice and remove add one to these as well so get that one up to a five as well then i'd be able to re-roll those dice as normal to be able to try to take out those centaurs that's how that works you can even like if say the centaurs had even higher defense like let's say they had a defense of eight for whatever reason so I re-roll these two dice, and let's say I got these two fives, and I re-roll. Well, of course I rolled good enough to get. A, I got a nine and eight, so that would still work. But let's say with my re-roll, I got a four and a two, meaning that that die was the successful attack. That's going to destroy a centaur. But five plus two is seven. It's not enough. If I still had a die left over, I could then get rid of that die to increase that die roll to a three, which would then even work. So, like, the dice that you don't roll fives, you hold on to them because you use them to increase the level or increase the, the, the number of the other dice uh, that you roll. And that, I, I really like that... That, that combat system, it, it, for one, there isn't a situation where the defense rolls dice. Um, I understand that, that, like, you know, being an active defender is kind of a fun thing to be able to be doing. You know, to be, you feel like you actually have a, a, a you know, a, a puncher's chance, if you will. Um, but 
this is a game that's not supposed to take a long time. The combat's supposed to be quick and brutal and efficient, and and I really really like the fact that it does that. Um, you know, so uh, you put yourself in a situation. Now, this is obviously not. This probably wouldn't happen ever. Um, you know, the centaurs you know probably wouldn't race out there uh, asking for trouble, mostly because they, they have ranged combat. You know, so they they, they want to like stay a little bit further away because ranged combat can't be retaliated, even if the person has ranged. So um, that probably this this particular scenario wouldn't actually occur, but you know it just that's one of those things where um, you know the, I like the fact that you just roll the dice, you resolve it, and you move on. You know, and and, and you just go on to the and then the other person gets to go because you already activated your unit, and you've done your process as far as that's concerned. Um, the cool thing is too, also if the person had an art of war card in their hand. They can, if they really, if they wanted to do the retaliate, but they didn't have the centaur card they had, they could discard that that's Art of War card to dig through their deck to find their centaur card. Because you can do that as, as an ability with, uh, with an Art of War card to find a centaur card so you can play it as that retaliate. Now you can, like, you are able to uh, use, th th when you, by doing that, that digging through to find that activation card, that's called a maneuver, and that you can use your Art of War cards. Um, other uh, abilities you can use that for is you can um, use it to use an Art of War card to draw two cards. Um, you can activate a second unit of your choice. Uh, like, so you can, if you still just, if you can't get that card you desperately need, you can use the second card to activate another unit. You can activate the same unit twice, but you can activate a second unit if you want to. Um, you can recall a troop. That's like the one. The, the troops are the ones that uh, get kind of beat down, like the centaurs or the Spartans or whatever. Uh, and then you can use it for. Obviously, you can use those for powers. And if you have a flying unit, um, there's like flying units have a, a special evasion skill that you can use the art of war for as well. So, I mean, admittedly, that's a very quick battle, but that kind of gives you a really good idea of how it works. And like I said, this isn't a game of like really, really like super complex dice rolling and mechanics or whatever, but it does have a lot going on with all the different powers that each one of the gods and troops and units would have um, that you, you have to use in conjunction with each other uh, to pull it off. All right, so all that is said and done. I just want to show you some of the minis. Obviously, like I said, the miniatures are amazing. So I'm just going to grab, like here, let's take a look at the old, like just, this is just a hoplite, but mind you, this guy is awesome. Look at that shield. I love that shield. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I always am scared, you know, to paint uh, miniatures that are really, 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 really super nice, especially ones that like, you know, that come with uh, a game. But I, when I get my copy of this, I think I might actually try uh, my hand of paint. Check out that. I mean, the, 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 the like the horned helmet that that the centaur has. I mean, that is so awesome. That is so cool. I, I just, I don't know, that I was really, really taken aback by that. Um, I'm just going to, here, I'll show, I, I want to show this one just because Ares, I mean, this is just, the, a lot of times, like, you'll have miniatures that, you know, just, they're just a dude standing there, right, like, and being all imposing, but I love the fact that Ares is just in like in in the middle of his downswing, like like coming up, and then of course you know because of the fact that you were you were fighting, like if a hoplite, if, if, if this is like actual size, so like if, if if you have a battle, this is him, you know with his sword that's as big as the dude. So I mean that's just I, I love the 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 epicness of the scale of of this 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 game and, and the miniatures and what have you. It's just amazing. All right, I'll show you Athena, obviously the other. Big one you can check out, like there's her owl, the giant spear, and um, obviously you know, the the Medusa shield that's sitting there. I, I can't get that to focus. I do apologize. Um, but why don't I show you actually Medusa while I'm talking here? You can see, and Medusa has a cool ability where, like, she can actually hand out these petrification tokens. Like if she's in the same area as troops, like all of the troops just die. They're, they're petrified, they're turned to stone. But then she can hand out petrification tokens to all the other different types of units that have debilitating effects as well. And so, you know, pretty cool abilities. And I do like all the little snakes whenever. And I should mention that I get a lot of these miniatures games with all these prototype minis a lot of the time um, from these different companies. And, like, they're almost 
always busted up or broken in some way. And I was stunned that none of these miniatures had anything broken on them whatsoever. So kudos to whoever uh, packed these up for me uh, because they came in pristine shape and they are absolutely amazing. So um, so there you go. Uh, as I said, the game ends when uh, basically in a skirmish when one of the gods dies or one of the gods uh, absorbs uh, four of these Omphalos tokens. And when you absorb it, a god is the one that absorbs it. They use a special action to do it. And when they do, they get one of these Omphalos cards and then that unlocks more powers and different options for the gods as well when they do that. Um, the skirmishes don't last very long. Uh, they are quick and efficient and bloody and a lot of fun. But let me talk about that more uh, in my conclusion, uh, which I'll do right now. All right, thank you very much for uh, learning how to play Mythic Battles. Like I said, there it has a lot going on uh, when you play the game, but the entry level, as far as the rules go, is, is very smooth and very slick. And I do know that if you go ahead and download um, the rule set, uh, for the, what they're going to have in the game when they publish it. There's even like a starting, like skirmish, starting scenario that will just like kind of, you know, dip your toes in, in, in the system and how it's played. And the, it'll really kind of like uh, get you going. And then also give you a nice taste uh, of what the game has to offer and probably pull you in even further. So if you want to read that, I strongly suggest you just go to uh, the old website, the Kickstarter page, and you can uh, download those rules and you can take a look at those for yourself if you so desire. Now, uh, I play a lot of these these minis games. Um, there's lots of different ones out there. Um, the one, the thing that stood out for me for this, as I said, was the immersive gameplay for me. It was the the the, the whole like feeling of like the epicness of the battle. You know, the the, the disparaging differences in the size of the of the, of the monsters and the, and the gods and whatever really made it fun. Um, ultimately, a game like this. Uh, is is for me it is if it doesn't get in its way as far as the fun that it's giving me I want it to like give me a really really cool theme a really really cool experience and I don't want to be bogged down looking through a rule book trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing now and this did exactly that um, I had played the mythic battles games that had come up from yellow earlier and I think this built on that perfectly and I think that if you are if you enjoy this type of game if you enjoy these types of miniatures games I think this is kind of a no-brainer I think you should definitely check it out so there you go uh, that's mythic battles it's a lot of fun it's got a great theme it's got awesome presentation and uh, I'm definitely backing it at the highest level. So uh, there you go. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Uh, if, uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Edmund Viking telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day.